Good morning. Today we're going to be looking at the AVL tree rotation system so you can see how we can actually balance a tree using the AVL binary search tree approach. And so I've got a couple trees here we're going to be looking at. We're going to see how we can actually organize the information to make that happen. So we're going to take a look at the first tree right here. So we have, we have, in this case, we have a right heavy subtree. And so if we look at this tree right here, we have cat at the root. We put the cat in the tree. That's great. We've got an ant over here on the left hand side. And then on our right heavy side, we have a dog, rad, and then rag. And so as you can see right here, the height difference between these two subtrees, we have a height of one over here and a height of three over here, so it's a difference of two greater than one, so we have to actually make a change. And this is where the idea of a rotation has to take place. And so what we have to do with this, in order to have this tree be more balanced, what we have to do is we have to rotate the tree on the right-hand side. And so we're going to rotate so we still keep the balanced approach, or excuse me, we're going to rotate this tree so we still keep the idea of having a binary search tree approach, but rather we have it so it's a little bit more squishy. We get a better, more organized structure. Now, this isn't perfect. We can't get perfectly balanced like all things should be. No spoilers. Um, but we have the idea that we can actually have some approach with this. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that's going to happen. So what we need to do is that when we're going to make this rotation right here, we're going to go ahead and just do a quick little arrow to show the change. And so cat and ant stay just right where they are. But what we're going to do is when we rotate this, because it's, um, it's right heavy, we're going to rotate to the left. So we're turning it to the left, rotating around the axis on that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep that same rotation. But we're going to make it so that when set cat's child right here will become rad. And then we'll rotate this down here to its left of its left child and keep rag at the right child. So we just go ahead and go like this right here. And so we have rad now as the, um, as the right child. And then Rad's left child is now the original left ch uh, right child of that, so dog, because it's less than um, Rad, but greater than cat. And then we keep the right-hand side over here of Rag. And so again, when we're doing a right heavy rotation, we do a right heavy, we call it the left rotation. And so right heavy um, tree gives us a left rotation. We rotate to the left. The same thing happens over here on the left heavy side when we're doing a right rotation. So in this um, subtree right here, we have 15 and 20. And then on the left subtree, we have 10, 5, and 0. Now, these are some great numbers and all, but we now have this, this difference again, this 3 versus 1. And that 3, 1 difference is something we have to actually address inside our, <clears throat> inside our balancing tree approach. So in order to make that balance happen, we're going to go over here. And the changes we need to make, we need to make a rotation on the right with this. And so 15 stays up here at the top, of course, and 20 is over here on the left. What we're going to make the change, though, is that 5 will now become the child of this with 10 over here and 0 over here. And so we have a difference of this, we have a difference of 2, 1, which is well within the realm of what is it considered to be a balanced tree. And so again, when we have a right heavy straight line or a left heavy straight line, we perform what are called the simple rotations. And that's when we just do the, the balance check on the tree. We see it's out of balance and we notice that it's a out of balance in a, a vertical direction as it were. And so that left heavy vertical or the right heavy vertical, if it's left heavy, we call the right rotation. If it's um, le right heavy, we call the left rotation. So we're going to make it so it's going to rotate around that. And so that's how we actually approach this. Now, that's a great start for a really simple um, insertion. So when and this happens again, the balance happens on insertion of the tree. But say, for example, when we're inserting the tree and we're going to get a more complex out of balance situation. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at that really fast. We're going to go ahead and switch over here to this. Now, we want to go ahead and take a look at some of the more complex rotations. We saw the single straight line rotations over here where the, it's just heavy in a straight line. But we have some complex rotations we also have to handle. When we insert data in a way that it doesn't make the quick just a little straight line either to the left or the right. So it's heavy in a straight, a easy way to look at this. So let's go ahead and take a look at these other rotations over here. So we have these insertions of data right here. So again, we're using the same data set we worked with earlier. And so I have cat and ant. And then I insert rag into the tree this time. And after I inserted rad, I inserted dog, and then I inserted rad. So I'm still right heavy on this tree, but it's not a simple, if I just did a, a left rotation, I'm going to just get, it's not going to work. It's just going to be messy, and it's not, not very helpful. And then this one right here, where I have a 15 in this subtree, and then I have 20, and then 0, 10 gets inserted, and then 5 is inserted. And again, I have this off-center. It's still heavy on this um, left side, but how am I going to address this? I can't just do a simple one-way rotation. What we need to do instead is we need to do what are called the left-right rotations and the right-left rotations. So we actually handle that in much the same way. We'll take a look at that. So when we have it right here, the first thing I want you to draw your attention on this is when we're inserting the data into the tree and it gets this little 
L shape right here, okay? The less than shape, yeah? That less than shape is our first visual cue when we're looking at the, um, our planning our data insertion, we're looking at the data insertion and see what's gonna happen. That's our insertion, we're gonna be doing what's called a left-right rotation. And so we're gonna do a left-right rotation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate to the left and then we're gonna rotate to the right till we put it into, into actual balance. So we rotate it so it's a little bit out of balance still, but then we do another rotation, a second rotation on the same data, and we get a f actually more balanced tree. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So again, with the um, less than shape right here in the data, that's our indication for a left-right rotation because it's still left heavy, but we have to do a left and a right rotation to make that happen. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the left rotation. So we're gonna make it so it's gonna go into a Rotate this bottom part right here, and we're going to rotate that to the left, so it's all in one tree. So we have the cat and ant. And then over here, rag stays just where it was. We're not going to affect anything with it. But then we're going to do the first the left rotation, so we're going to rotate to the left over here, and we'll have rad, because rad is still. And then dog. And now we're going to do, we've done that left rotation, and so the next rotation is the right rotation. So we're going to rotate again around this to the right. And now we're going to shift this again, and so we have ant and cat in that same structure. Over here, now we're going to go back to rad, and then over here we have dog, and to the right again we have rag. And so we take that same data set right here, but when we're inserting in this pattern where it gives us that L shape, that zigzaggy approach, we're out of balance, but we're not in a balance, we can just do a simple uh, left rotation to take care of it, or right rotation to take care of it, because it's out of balance in a more complex way. And so we have to do two rotations. And so we first rotate to the left to bring it out of balance in a nice line, and then we rotate again, which brings us able to balance it in a more complex fashion like we have right here. So again, we have a, a two, one difference, which is a difference of only one, so we're in balance. We have, our height balance is really happy. And so that's the way we can actually have a balance in all, as all things should be, stealing back from, again, from that Avengers reference. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other out of balance, but still kind of squishy way. And that is the out of balance. We're still on the left heavy approach, but we're left heavy with that, that, that squish. And so with this left heavy approach, you can see we have 15, 20, then zero, then 10 got inserted, okay? And then five got inserted. So it's still a binary search tree. It still works as a binary tree, but what we need to do is we have that left heavy board kind of squished. And so, again, when we're looking for this, when you're looking at the data, we're looking for the greater than symbol. Those alligator symbols, those things you remember from elementary school to talk about the greater than and less than, they're a great mnemonic that we can keep using to actually see how we're going to be approaching this. And so what we want to do is if we see our data going in in that greater than symbol approach, a.k.a. the zigzag with the, with the greater than, that means it's our clue to do a right-left rotation. So it's, we're going to start off with a right rota rotation. So we're going to start off with a right rotation to bring it an out of balance in a line, and then a left rotation to bring it back into a nice squishy tree shape. So again, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we go over here, we have 15 and 20. Those stay the same. We're going to do our first, our right rotation and take, uh, so that 5 and 10. So we have 0, and we go to 5, and then we go to 10. So we now have a straight line out of balance still, because we still have that 3-1 height difference, but it's out of balance that we can now just do one more rotation and so that f that's the first rotation. And then we go to our second rotation. And again, we have 15 and 20. No, no effect on that because we're not changing those data sets. And then we're going to go ahead 5, 0, 10. And so now we have a 2 to 1 reference. Oh, yes, we've got our balance within a difference of 1. We're good to go. And so this is the way the rotation itself works. And so we can see how that approach looks. So again, when we see this, when we're looking at how the data itself in a visual fashion, so if we're seeing this actually on, like on a paper example, like on a test, or if we're looking at the actual data that we're putting into our tree so we can actually plan to see what's happening in the AVL tree, we look for the patterns that we see right here. So if we see a greater than sign or a less than sign in our data entry, oh, when we see those greater and less than symbols, those symbols we remember from elementary school, that's our cue to use the complex rotations of either a right-left or a left-right rotation. The less than symbol is our symbol for the left-right, because L, less. I know, crazy mnemonics, but they work. And greater than our right-hand side, right-left rotation. Now, if we go back over here on our simple rotations, if we have 
the data going down in a fashion like this where it's very right heavy in a straight line, that's our clue. If it's right heavy, we pull a rotation for the left. If it's heavy on the left hand side, then we want to rotate to the um, right. And so that's how we have to do this. So it's really a really pretty simple approach. We'll take a look at the code in this in the next lecture. But here we are for the actual structure and the logic of how the AVL tree rotations work. Thanks again and have a great day. We'll see you next time.